After the tragedy of Karbala, a new era has started in the lives of Ahlul Bayt In fact, after the death of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we find in history that the opposition and confrontation with Ahlul Bayt started immediately. We know about Saqifa, how the Sahaba and the companions left the Prophet without being washed and engaged themselves in electioneering to find out a Khalifa who would succeed the Prophet. Something unimaginable happened, but it happened and it has been confirmed. Maulana Rum writes, Chun Sahaba, Hubbe Dunya Dashtan, Mustafa Rabbi Kafan and Dahtan. Because the companions were immersed in the worldly love, they left Mustafa without Kafan. Mulana Rum is not Shia. Chun Sahaba, Hubbe Dunya Dashtan. And then, for 25 years, Imam Ali al Islam stayed at home. They did whatever they wanted to do. And when Mawla became Khalifa, that means by consensus, <coughs> he was allowed four years and nine months and few days to remain a Khalifa without a single day in which he could pass his time peacefully. Either he was engaged in Jamal or Sifim or Naharwan or the raids carried out by Muawiyah's people onto the Islamic Kingdom. You can read history find surprising that we should have something like Nahjul Balagha today for a man in spite of all these things found time to sit on the member of Kufa and give to us those sermons which today have become Islamic unmatched heritage called Nahjul Balagha. If they had allowed him more time we would have had more from Ali ibn Abi Talib. Today, his letters and his sermons that we have among us in Najib al and we have in many other volumes as well, because Mas'udi writes that I remember at least 480 khutbah of Ali ibn Abi Talib al-Islam, who was earlier than the compiler of Najib al Najib is 200 years later, therefore he has taken some 280 khutbahs. Muruj Zahad writes, Mas'udi, that I remember more than that. Then came the time of Imam Hassan, which of course is punctuated with all opposition. Even after the truce with Muawiyah Ali, uh, Hassan Ali Salam was not allowed to, to live peacefully. It climaxed, culminated. It reached the pinnacle in Karbala. 
after the Karbala, that revolution which was required of Ahlul Bayt salam, was now completed. Now a new era has started. People don't understand. Even historians have made very grievous mistakes here, saying that we see a contrast between Ali, Hassan, Hussein, and the rest of Aimma. There is no question of contrast. The question is, one era is over, the another era has started. The Rabbi Nuh is known as Second Adam because there was a deluge, what is called Tufan Nu. The whole world then was drowned. Only those were saved who were with him on the Noah's Ark. That is called the deluge or Tufan. That is the reason why when the new era started, Nuh is called Second Adam. Imam Zainul Abidin Salawatullah is called Adam Ahlul Bayt. The Adam of Ahlul Bayt, meaning the beginner of a new era. In the time of Umar, when Iran was defeated, among the prisoners came two princesses the daughters of Yazdajar, one was Shah Zaman and another was Shah Banu. Now normally the princesses and the members of the royal families were never taken prisoners, but they came as prisoners. When they came there as prisoners, Umar, when he saw these two princesses, he came near Shah Banu and tried to remove the veil which she had on her face. And in Farsi, Bibi Shaharbanu said, in Farsi, Wo unto the family of Yazdajard, that the daughters are submitted to this humiliation. Omar did not know Farsi. So he started shouting, he said, this woman is abusing me. The moment he started shouting that this woman is abusing me, Ali ibn Abi Talib intervened. He said, Omar, do you know his her language? He said, no. Then how did you just form an opinion that she is abusing you? She is not abusing you. She is crying over the fate of her own royal family that they have come to be subjected to this humiliation. And then Ali ibn Abi Talib talked to Shah Banu in Farsi and said, Isma Shuma Chist, what is your name? She said, Shah Zanan. Upon hearing that, Imam al Islam said, Shah Zanan ke isme Fatima Zahrast. Shah Zanan is only Fatima Zahra, means Shah Zanan is Sayyidatun Nisa, as we say. Lady of all the ladies. I will call you Shaharbanu. She said, Shaharbanu is the name of my sister. Mawla said, Me Danam, I know. But I will call you Shaharbanu. And I will give her another name. Then Umar saw that the matter was changing. She he could not speak a word then. Mawla Ali Islam said, she cannot be sold in the bazaar like any other maid. Imam Ali Islam called Imam Hussein and said, Hussein, I am giving to you a treasure born of a royal family. If she is happy and pleased to be married to you and you to her, may Allah grant you a good posterity. When both agreed, Shah Zanan, Shah Shahrbanu, Nikah was performed by Imam Ali there and there, and with the blessings of Imam Ali, Yah Shahrbanu went to Imam Hussein. There remained one sister, the other one, Mawla Ali gave her to Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, because Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr was also brought up by Ali ibn Abi Talib. Said, Muhammad, you will marry this, and two daughters of Yazdajard, 
were thus married within the family of Ali ibn Abi Talib. In Hijra 38, in Arabic, when there are two royal or noble families, when they unite by marriage, or when good, two good things merge, or even when, according to calculation, two good stars, as they call it, they combine, these are called Qiranu Sa'dayn, meeting of two nobles. This marriage of Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam with Shahrbanu is called Qiranu Sa'dayn. And in 38 Hijra, our fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abdin, was born of Shahrbanu. Of course, there are two dates. One date is 15th Jamad al Ula. <coughs> but another date which we follow is 5th of Shaban. And we follow this date because we received this amendment in our date from Ayatollah Sayyid Hussein Abu Jardi, who wrote a letter to us saying that according to my investigation and research, this is a correct date of the birth of Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Fifth of Shaban. Makes no difference whether we observe it on 15th Jamad al-Ula or 5th. The purpose is to remember him. Ten days after his birth, then Abhi Shahrbanu died. Ten days after. Therefore, the stories that we receive in Iran, when you go there, they show you some mountains and say, here is Shahrbanu. Ladies are allowed to go or not allowed to go, I don't know. And males are allowed to go, something like that. And sometimes some cloth is shown that Bibi Shahrbanu, after Karbala, went into the mountain and only a piece of cloth has remained outside. All those are stories. They are not authentic. Because Janabi Shehrbanu was not there in Karbala. Now, whenever you hear Banu ne kaha rokar, it does not mean Shehrbanu. It means any lady of Karbala. It can mean Bibi Zainab, because Banu means lady. It can mean Umm Kulthum, it can mean Rubab. That Banu does not mean Shahar Banu. Just try to understand. Because in Persian, any lady respectable is called Khanum or Banu. Do you understand the difference? Well, he lost his mother while infant. But then Imam Hussein had other wives. And it is seen in the life of Imam alayhi salam, something which we should learn. And on such nights as this, one feels like reminding our brothers, our boys, our youngsters. He never ate at home without his mother being there. Which mother? Stepmother. He would say, let us now have our lunch or our meal. But he would wait. Till mother had finished her prayers or her household chore and say, Mother, you will sit with me. Not the real mother. The real mother has passed away. Is a stepmother. And as she said, he will never, never extend his hand first to any dish. Wait. The mother first takes whatever she likes, then he follows. So somebody said, Yabda Rasulullah, why don't you sometimes? He said, I fear that a particular dish she might be liking more and she might need more than one helping. If I take it away, she will be deprived. She is my mother. If stepmother has that status, my friends, what about the real mother? This is the akhlaq of Al Muhammad. <laughs> Islam taught us that stepmother is a mother. Otherwise, before our Prophet, they used to inherit stepmothers as chattels. But the Prophet said, your stepmother is also your, your mother. Imam salam started a new era. And I would like to finish within a few minutes because 
MashaAllah, we've had three successive nights of program. But these nights are called nights of light. In a hadith, when people meet to remember Ahlul Bayt and their teachings, those are called Layali Nur. Layali Nur means Shabhai Nur. It means the lights of nights of light. To be able to sit anywhere else and have a small ch chat is something else. By the grace of Allah, to have an opportunity to sit in the night of light, where Farishta and Malaika are with us, and where we assemble, everyone, every Malaika does istighfar for us, as long as we have not dispersed. There cannot be a better meeting than this. I wish people knew what a Kushali is. Now, when the Waqiyah and the Hadisa and the event of Karbala took place, after that, there has got to be an evaluation. It is normally said in history that revolution eats its own children. If you look at French Revolution, if you look at any other revolution, that at the end of it, revolution eats its own children. That means the perpetrators of revolution are eaten up by the revolution. But here there was a revolution. Imam Islam stood and of course, all were slain and all were killed. It's, a, it's now to be evaluation time. What happened? 61 Hijra, Ashur took place. 62, people of Medina revolted against Yazid. The khutbah, each word that I say I will not repeat because I have no time. If I study the khutbah of Imam Zainal Abidin in Kufa, it is different from the khutbah of Sham. In Kufa, people knew who Zainal Abidin was, yet they joined Yazid. Therefore, in Kufa, Zainul Abidin speaks about the guilt and the crime they have committed. Because people knew who they were, in spite of knowing they did what they did. In Sham, he is not telling them of their guilt. He is introducing himself as to who am I. Because in Sham they did not know that this is Ahlul Bayt. If you look at two khutbah, you'll find the difference. It is in Sham that he said, Anabnu Zamzam wal Muna. I am the son of Zamzam. I am the son of Muna. Ana Abnul Bayt. Ana Abnul Hilli wal Haram. I am the son of Kaaba. I am the son of Haram. Then they knew that, oh, we have fought somebody else. In Kufa, they all knew because they have been with Ali ibn Abi Talib. So people of Medina revolted. In, in 64 and in 65 beginning, Sulaiman ibn Surah al-Khizai revolted. This is called Jama'at al-Tawwabin, the repentance. They all slain and killed. In 66, Mukhtar stood up. We know this. It's all happening. In any of these revolutions, Imam Zayn did not take open side. No. He blessed Mukhtar, that is something else, whenever the news came. Like today, Shimr has been slain, Omar ibn Sa'ad has been killed, or Hurmala has been killed. Imam Zayn said, may Allah bless Mukhtar. But he never took part openly, kept silent, kept quiet in his own work. He set up a program in four ways. The first one was character building of the people. Based on the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. And the madrasa was established at home and in Masjid Nabawi. There were two madrasas, one in the house of Ali ibn Hussein. And one in the Masjid Haram. Even today, if you look at the world against us, I'm not going to speak upon that. That's not my subject. The whole world against us, against Islam and against Shia. The time has come sometimes to see whether we should act like Zainul Abidin or not. 
by establishing the madrasas which would teach exactly what Islam is according to the thinking of teaching of Ahlul Bayt. Not only mothers of children, that is necessary for youngsters who are growing up to understand. He created men like Sabit bin Dinar, who is known as Abu Hamza from Ali. Men like Saeed ibn Musayyab, men like Ali bin Rafi'ah, men like Aban bin Taghlib. These are the people, great companions of Ali ibn Hussein, who have been acknowledged as ulama of repute by Sunni and by Shia. Who trained them? Ali ibn al-Hussein at home and in the mosque of the when? after Karbala now no one could take any objection to this because he was just teaching Quran and Hadith, Tafsir but under that guys he taught all those teachings of Ahlul Bayt and made them logicians of first nature first group he was preparing the groundwork for the madrasa of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Oh, <coughs> the madrasa from which 4,000 students came. Imam alayhi salam started this. And he was insisting upon people. When I used to go and learn from my teachers like, may Allah bless Marhuma Qahidar, rahmatullah alayhi. Or Sayyid Ayyub Hussain Naqwi, rahmatullah alayhi. Or Ali Muhammad Jalal, Rahmatullah Ali. These were my teachers. When I used to go there to learn, they would say, Keep the book aside. The first thing you want to learn and must learn from me is Tazkiyatun Nafs, to make your nafs park. Is it park? Is that conscience of your, is it park and pure? If it is not, don't learn. Because an alim who has got najis nafs will become a najis alim. First try to be park in your nafs. And they used to give us lessons in akhlaqiyat to show how one has got to be. The more the branch bears the fruits, the lower it goes. The lesser the fruit, the higher it goes. We were taught these things by the ulama, by ulama of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. The days are of Husham ibn Abdul Malik. And all of you have heard, I'm just repeating it for my thawab and for us to enjoy that particular incident which took place in history. Husham was heir apparent, not the king. Abdul Malik was the but Shah, king of Manumaiya, after Karbala. He came for Hajj, and just like these days, he could not go to kiss. Hajj al-Aswad, impossible. Multitude of people, all surrounding Kaaba. How could he go? Much as he tried, he could not reach. So his friends and ministers told him to wait. When the crowd lessens, then you will go. So he sat beside Maqam Ibrahim, waiting for the crowd to reduce. And just then, when the people were actually going towards Kaaba, like flocks of people and crowds of people, a man appears with his glance cast on the ground. And he says, please make a way for me also. And the people started separating. And the, he saw from there that the crowd is making way for one man. Who he is, we do not know. And they made the way up to Hajar Aswad. So Husham ibn Abdul Malik said, Who is this man? Is he another king also here? All of them, in order to please Husham, said, We don't know. They knew who he was. They knew very well who he was. But they said we, a student of Imam alayhi salam's household, one of the names that I've given was Hamam bin Ghalib. 
The other name which is famous is Farazdaq. He was there, and because he was trained by our fourth Imam, immediately said, Walakinna ana a'arifu. While the others were saying, we do not know who he is. He said, Walakinna ana a'arifu. If you want to know from me, I know him. Husham said, Waman hu? Now he did not give the name. هذا الذي تعرف البطحاء وطأته والبيت يعرفه والحل والحرم هذا ابن فاطمة إن كنت جاهله هذا ابن خير العباد كلهم هذا التقي النقي طاهر العلم إن عد أهل التقى فكانوا أئمتهم وَإِنْ قِيلَ مَنْ خَيْرُ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ قِيلَ هُمُ مَا قَالَ لَا إِلَّا فِي تَشَهُدِهِ وَلَوْ لَتَشَهُدْ لَقَانَ لَاؤُهُ نَعَمْ Very long. The Qasida is so long that if I go on and on it will take half an hour. هذا الذي تعرف البطحاء وطأته The valleys of Mecca know the footsteps. The valley of Makkah knows his footstep. Walbayt ya'rifu. Kaaba knows him. It is something else to know Kaaba and something else for Kaaba to know him. To say I know Kaaba is something else. To say Kaaba knows me is something. Walbayt ya'rifu. Kaaba knows him. Walhillu walharamu. Haram knows him. And the area beyond Haram also knows him. Haza ibn Fatima. He is the son of Fatima Zahra sallallahu alayha. In kunta jahilahu. If you don't know, let me tell you. Haza ibn khayri ibadillah kullihimi. He is the son of one. The best of the creation ever walked on earth. In udda ahlu tuqa. If you want to count the people of taqwa. Kanu ahimmatahum. All these are the leaders of people of taqwa. وَإِنْ قِيلَ مَنْ خَيْرُ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ قِيلَ هُمْ And if somebody were to ask who are the best of all creation, they are the best of creation. And the last thing which he said, he has never said no to the poor except in tashahud. The word la means no. He has never used the word la except in tashahud. Because in tashahud there is a word, أَشْهَدُ وَاللَّا إِلَهَا إِلَهَا he has never used the word la except in tashahud. And if there had been no tashahud, his la would have been naam. Husham could not understand. And he said, but after all, who he is? Farazdaq said, he is Mawlaya. Ali ibn al-Husayn ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. He is Ali, son of Hussein, son of Ali, son of Abu Talib. Husham was so disturbed that he jailed him. He put him in prison. Farazdaq was put in prison, punished for having said this. But he realized for the first time that the rule and the influence which Allah gives is something else. And the power and the rule which the worldly people give is something else. Here, the heads might bow down. There, the hearts bow down. created man like that and he himself developed a personality which was actually the successful accomplishment of Karbala. People realized that wealth is something else and kingdom is something else. Ahlul Bayt is something else. Today we have got fund of a hadith from Aban bin Taghlib Abu Hamza Thumali, inshallah, Maha Ramadan is approaching me. Allah grant us tawfiq and life to be able to, inshallah, partake in the fast of Ramadan. There is a dua of Abu Hamza Thumali at night in the time of Sahar. Very long dua. But just read the translation over the month. Not if you can't get time in one night. It's quite lengthy. Take the translation and over a month, paragraph by paragraph, see the fund of knowledge. See the fund of humility. 
Zainul al Abidin alayhi salam has communicated to us through Abu Hamza Somali. Aban bin Taghli, Ali bin Ra, Nafla. These are great giants of Islamic history. All the creation of Zainul Abidin. One. Second thing, he created an institution which is unmatched, unparalleled. That is called the institution of Azadari. It is disturbing everyone even today in 20th century. Muharram will be coming and you find people disturbed. Are you log matam karte hai? क्यों करते हैं बस तुम्हारे सीने पर करते हैं अपने सीने पर इफ दे आर बीटिंग देयर चेस्ट दे आर बीटिंग देयर चेस्ट और योर चेस्ट ये सब किराए के हैं दैट मींस दे ऑल हायर्ड पीपल सो वी से ऑलराइट वी विल पे यू यू स्टार्ट इफ यू कैन हाउ मच डू यू वांट 200 पाउंड्स ए नाइट विल गिव यू कम ऑन कम एंड स्टार्ट बीटिंग योर चेस्ट for at least one hour they don't know that we know so much about them ghazali has written in ahya al ulum yahrum ala al zakir an yadhkura musibat al husain min al mimbar it is haram for a zakir to read about imam husain from the mimbar about musiba ghazali writes in ahya al ulum but why li annahu yajur ila dhamm al sahaba Because finally it will take them to Sahaba, the Sahaba who perpetrated all the evil. They will have to be exposed. So that means you don't want us to say anything about Karbala because you don't want your elders to be exposed. And Imam knew about it. So under the guise of majlis, whether it is marriage, as we had marriage before marriage, we do have majlis. Why? Imam Ali Salam started after, before death, when a man is ill, majlis. When a man is died, again majlis, right? Every time Muharram, Safar, Shabat Jumaa. Why? It is to keep that institution alive. Because had it not been Imam Hussein Ali Salam, there would have been no adhan of namaz in Maghrib or Isha or namaz. Now. No one could stop it then, because whenever they came, they said, "Well, what is Rabi Din doing?" He said, "He is weeping." But why is he weeping? He is weeping because of Karbala. So they went away. Nobody could stop it at that time, and it took firm foothold because it was thought to be natural for children to weep over their family. Little understanding that this was going to grow into a tree. For under this, Allah is our today. Millions have become Shia Islamists even today. If member were not put to misuse, even today people would have become Islamists. When we started abusing our adversaries, they start abuse. But when you have a good shawl like this, manufactured by your company, stand up and say that these are the qualities of my product. There is no need to tell that these are the drawbacks of your product. Speak about your own product, and they will compare their own product with it and find out. Say who Ahlul Bayt are, and do not say who the others are, and you will find them drawn to you, because there isn't any excellence and virtue comparable to Ahlul Bayt alayhimus. And the third thing which he did in his program was, and that is something. For which we will ever remain indebted to our fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Adaiyah. No one, a believer, of course, always has moments of inspiration where he likes to 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 pray to someone. To pray. Whether you are a believer or not a believer, to pray, to have an ear, is natural. I never realized this urge of prayer 
I never realized till when I was in Baghdad, four months and four days, and in the four wall that we had, and we could not get out of the four walls for four months and four days, some of the prisoners who never prayed, huh? Muslims, they would come near a wall, any wall, corner, and whisper into the wall and say, we are in a problem. Is there any way of getting out? Help us. And I used to ask them, what's happening? He said, when we go to the wall, we find a companion who is listening. And we tell him whatever we want to tell him. And some of them were released the second day. Huh? It is the urge to pray, which is natural. The only difference is, you pray to a wall which makes no difference, and you pray to he who created the wall, there's a difference. Who says, Ana sami wa ana al -basir. I am the one who hears and I am the one who sees. Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, under the guise of ad'iyah, dua, taught the teaching of Ahlul Bayt, not only Ahlul Bayt. In fact, it is my submission that take dua number 20 from Saifa Kamila. It is called dua makarimul akhlaq. And read every line and compare it with all the psychological treatises of today and yesterday. And see how advanced the teaching of Zainul Abdin Islam is. How a man should live when he's old, how a man should live when he's young, how a man should live when he's poor, and how he lives when he is rich, how when he is famous, how when he is unknown. Things which make us think. How to balance our own complexes. All this is in, uh, in one dua, which is called dua ya makarimul akhlaq. He left this behind. It's called Saifa Kamila. And in the calculation of collection of hadith, there are only two collections which are which are I mean unchallengeable in the sense that there can be no doubt about the authenticity. Only two. Others, there are doubts, no? That maybe this hadith may be true. This hadith may not be true. The reporter is right. The reporter is not reliable. In other hadith, there are many debates. But there are two collections in which there are no debates. One is Nahjul Balagha. Another is saif e kamila saif e kamila there is no room for debate. For it was given and written by Imam Muhammad al-Baqir al And it has thus come to us from our Imam Muhammad Bakr in two ways. One from Muhammad Bakr and one from Zayd ibn Ali ibn Hussein. So we have got two copies and two copies are identical, not a single word. So when you read the dua, you thank him who left this behind. Ihya, he is the Adam, Adam of Ahlul Bayt who revived that which was supposed to have gone extinct after Karbala. And when they realized, it was too late. By 95 Hijra, they realized, and we are told, Mawla, Pentis Saltak Rotera, it's true, that Mawla for 35 years wept. But weeping and crying and establishing Azadari was for this reason. See, that under this propaganda will go on and on and on. Today, show me one. Show me one place where you can invite so many mominin without card. No card, eh? No telephone call. No request to come Mr. and Mrs. No. Just a mukhisab or any mu'min comes to know that there is a viladat, there is a majlis, and you can come and sit. Rich or poor, high or low, we'll sit down there, enjoy. There isn't anywhere. I was told that Billy Graham was coming. And Billy Graham had about one and a half billion people 
Nobody asked how he drew that crowd. It took six months to prepare for that crowd. How many? When he came to Nairobi, I remember, uh, in his pocket, Kamukunji, we had one million crowd. It took one year ahead of his time. His emissaries and his envoys came to Nairobi to sell the tickets from home to home and house to house to be able to see Kamkunji full. And we don't have to do There's only one name, name of Hussain ibn Ali, which draws crowd. According to the population. If it is Pakistan, millions. If it is India, millions. They will come, sit or stand, shine or rain, just to listen to Hussein ibn Ali. He left a legacy, Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, on the day of Qiyamah and before we die, always we pray that we may always be on the path of Ahlul Bayt. We may not deviate from here. We may not be taken away from this path. Because the path for which Imam Zain Abdin worked so hard. May Allah grant us the wisdom of going deep into the legacy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Trying to understand. Ya Allah. We pray for all those who have passed away recently and in the past. Wherever they are buried, Ya Allah, bless them with your mafir. Those who are taken ill, either they have asked us to pray for them, they might not have asked to pray for them. Ya Allah, grant them good health and soon. We pray that the enemies of Islam may not be now there anymore and make them extinct. Ya Allah, we have Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We pray that our ulama, our mujtahideen may be saved from all the calamity.